12 News is your local election headquarters. Steph Machado is joining us this week to recap what was a really big week. Of course, we had our election on Tuesday. So, Steph, you were covering the Republicans on election night, and it was a bad night for the GOP. Yeah, it really was, Danielle. You know, in Rhode Island and Massachusetts, Democrats won every single statewide and federal race. Our colleague Ted Nisi reports that's the first time that's happened in modern history. I was at the GOP headquarters in Warwick, where all the statewide candidates were located. The party started at 8 p.m. by 8.47. WPRI had called the governor's race for Dan McKee. He ended up uh, beating Republican Ashley Kalis by 18 percentage points. If you look at Kalis's performance in the governor's race, she underperformed some of the other statewide Republicans on the ticket despite putting $5 million of her own money into the campaign. She got 39% of the vote. The Republican nominees for LG, Treasurer, and Secretary of State earned more votes than she did despite spending significantly less and certainly having lower name recognition with all those ads she had on the airways. And then Democrat Seth Magaziner won the second congressional district race by about three points and that one shocked Republicans because they had been really mm -hmm. hanging their hopes on Alan Fung. Fung was actually supposed to make an appearance at that GOP celebration in Warwick after his separate party at Twin Oaks in Cranston, but that didn't happen after his loss. Everyone sort of just went home quickly in a pretty subdued fashion. Yeah, quite a night. So you also cover Providence City Hall for us, Steph, and the turnout this year was lower than the last midterm election because, you know, there's just a lack of competitive local races, but there were some changes approved to the city charter, right? That's right. Providence voters approved all 10 of the charter changes that the city council had put on the ballot. You may recall the council had to override Mayor Jorge Alorza's veto mm -hmm. in order to put these ballot questions on there back in August. Now, the most high profile question that passed will create a brand new school board that is half elected and half appointed by the mayor. So voters will get to pick five members of the school board in 2024. Right now, the mayor appoints all the members who are then confirmed by the council. All right. And finally, a new Providence City Council elected. So what can you tell us now about the current makeup of this new council? Yes, yeah, so this was an unusual year because it was the first time that term limits took effect. So mm -hmm. a number of councilors had to leave the council and their seats were wide open. So let's take a look. There are seven new city councilors joining the council in January. Also, all eight incumbents who ran for re-election won back their seats. All 15 of these new members are Democrats, so continuing to have no minority party on the council. Also, the city council will flip back to majority women and it will be majority people of color. That's a change from the current council, which is majority white. There will also be a change in leadership. Rachel Miller has already secured the support of 11 members, including herself, for her candidacy for council president. That official vote takes place in January once everyone is sworn in. She is replacing Council President John Igliosi. He was one of the term limited councilors. He'd been serving on the council since the 1990s. And I did interview Miller uh, last week on Pulse of Providence. So folks can watch that interview on our website to see what she plans to do with Council President. All right. What a week in Rhode Island politics. Steph, thanks for the recap. Thanks for joining us. Of course.